Hello, in this segment we're going to discuss solving equations with radicals in them. Uh, you might think of radicals as a square root, but it could be a cube root, a fifth root, a lot, there's a lot of different roots. So we're going to start out with just a very basic sort of equation and we'll uh, expand from there. Uh, we'll start with the square root x plus 56 equals 16. This is kind of the ideal type of radical equation where uh, you have a square root on one side all by itself. Uh, if that is the case, then you are always free to simply square both sides. If you square a square root, then you get what was underneath it all along, x plus 56. If you square 16, you get uh, 256. And now you're back to uh, algebra 1, take away 56, and x is going to be 200. Uh, so, like I said, that's kind of the, the very most basic type of uh, radical equation you can have. Uh, another kind of basic uh, type of equation you could have is something like this. Uh, 4 x to the 2 thirds uh, minus 6 equals 10. Um, and uh, uh, what you're going to do here is you're going to add 6 to both sides. And... Uh, you always want to get the x term by itself first. So add 6 to both sides. 4x to the 2 thirds equals 16. Uh, you're going to divide by 4. And you get x to the 2 thirds equals 4. And now, um, since you have the x isolated, you can put a power on both sides of 3 halves. The reason for 3 halves is 3 halves times 2 thirds makes 1. That would be x to the 1 equals 4 to the 3 halves power. Uh, when you have a, an exponent that's a fraction, the bottom number is the root, the top number is the power. So this is the same as the square root of 4 cubed, or 2 cubed, which is 8. So x equals 8 here. Um, with all these problems, you need to check for extraneous answers. Uh, that means you need to plug in x equals 8 and just make sure that it works. Um, so if I were to um, uh, go in here and do 4 uh, times 8 to the 2 thirds power minus 6, uh, remember the bottom is the cube, is the cube root, and then that's squared. So this would be 4 times uh, the cube root of 8 squared minus 6. Uh, 4 times the cube root of 8 is 2. Squared is 4. So 4 times 4 minus 6. That does, in fact, equal 10 like we thought. So that is a correct answer. Uh, Uh, next, I want to examine uh, the root of x minus 2 equals x minus 2. Um, this is one that I'm going to solve uh, with algebra, and we're going to check for extraneous roots, and I'm also going to show you how to solve this on the calculator. Um, for starters, uh, I'm going to, uh, because we already have a square root on one side and it's by itself, that is, again, an ideal situation where you can just square both sides. So I'm going to do this. Square, square, and you get x minus 2. The square, uh, the square root squared is x minus 2. And then this is going to be x minus 2 times x minus 2. And I'm going to foil that, but before I do, I want to just point something out. We have x minus 2 on both sides of these, uh, this equation. And it may be tempting to divide one of those out. Uh, you know, just from the rules of algebra, it seems like you could. Um, we are not going to do that because if you did, you would take what's a quadratic over on this side and knock it down to a linear. And in the process, you would lose solutions. So it's possible if you divide out something with an X on both sides, you're going to lose solutions that are valid solutions. So you never want to divide out something with an X. If you divide out a number, a three, a five, a two, go for it. But if it has an x, you need to leave it in there till the end. Uh, we're going to foil this out and get x squared minus 4x 
plus four, uh, and we'll take away x from both sides, add two to both sides, and we've got zero in there. Uh, x squared minus five x plus six. Uh, x and x, so it multiplies to be 6, but adds up to negative 5, negative 3, and negative 2. Um, and if you uh, uh, check uh, x, if you say x equals 3 or positive 2, we're going to take those and we're going to check them. Those are my two answers. Going back to the original problem, x minus 2 under the root equals x minus 2, not under the root. If you put in 3, we want to ask ourselves, is this true? The square root of 1 equals 1. Yes, it is. Uh, and then we'll do the square root of 2 minus 2. Does that equal 2 minus 2? Square root of 0 equals 0. Check. So both of these are good solutions. And I said if we're going to do this on the calculator. I'm actually going to do another problem with the calculator. Um, um, so anyway, that is an example of checking for extraneous solutions. Um, before I do anything on the calculator, I want to just talk about extraneous solutions more. And I'm going to use this same uh, question to kind of make some comments. Uh, we had the square root of x minus 2 equal to x minus 2. This was a square root uh, expression, and this was a linear And a fail-safe way to find solutions to any equation, not just this, but anything at all, is to graph the left side and the right side and then see where they cross. So this guy would graph like, there's a square root curve. And then x minus 2 is a linear equation. So uh, I'm just going to make up a few linear equations. One way you could have an answer is that. And this would be a... one solution um, uh, problem. Another thing you could do is you could have your square root function like that, and you could have a linear equation that did this. And that would be a two solution uh, equation where the line crosses the square root and in the, the linear, the straight line crosses the square root in two places. And then another option would be this. There's your square root. There's your line. Clearly here the line doesn't cross anywhere. So this would be a no solution. So um, that's how come you sometimes have extraneous answers. That's why sometimes you have and, uh, equations that have no solution. You know, especially when you have a square root or any sort of root, uh, uh, especially an even root, a square root, a fourth root. If the problem ends, it's possible that the right side of this equation, x minus 2, may be down here. That's not actually the line of x minus 2, by the way. Um, it's just a stand-in linear equation, but a linear equation could be down here. The square root could be up here. They just never even touch. Uh, so that's what you're looking for when you check for extraneous answers. Uh, going back to some um, uh, 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 equations that we're just going to solve involving uh, uh, different roots. We'll start out with a, another very uh, easy, nice scenario where we have a cube root uh, equal to another cube root. And if, if that's the case, then you can simply cube both sides. If you cube a cube root, you just get x plus 4. There's 2x minus 5. You're back to algebra 1 now. Uh, take away x and uh, add 5, so 9 equals x. And you can certainly plug that in, and you should find that it works. The cube root of 9 plus 4, does that equal the cube root of 
2 times 9 minus 5, and sure enough, it does. So that's a very simple type of, of uh, uh, equation. Um, one that's not quite as simple, but um, in the same ballpark, imagine 6 roots of x minus root of x minus 1 equals 0. Um, now, you cannot just start squaring everything, because if you square the left side, that's going to be a FOIL problem. You're going to end up with a lot of awful square roots doing that. If you square the right side, it's zero. So what you want to do here instead is first add the square root of x minus 1. Like that. And then you square. And if you have a 6 as a coefficient, if you have a coefficient times the square root of x, Everything gets squared. So the 6 squared is 36. Uh, square root of x squared is x. And this is x minus 1. Uh, if this was 6 plus root x, you'd have a lot different type of problem. We'll look at that next. But uh, in this one, you're not going to have a nice answer, but it doesn't take too long to get there. 35x equals negative 1. Divide by 35. So x appears to be negative 1 over 35. And we are going to check that. We had uh, 6 roots of x equals root of x minus 1. And uh, if I put negative 1 35th in here, and negative 1 35th minus 1, you're going to notice that we have a, a negative under the square root, and that gets a sad face. That is not allowed. Uh, so this is extraneous. And thus we have no solution here. Um, and uh, if you graphed the left and right side here of this equation, um, you would find that the graphs basically never cross each other. Let me just do that real quick, and then we'll do a, another one in earnest of uh, uh, graph using the graph. So this is what we had a moment ago. And the way you solve this on a calculator is you turn it on, Clear out whatever you have. And I'm going to graph the left side on its own 6 square roots of x. Then I'm going to graph the right side square root of x minus 1. So we're going to draw that on the graph and see if they cross where they cross. And if you go to zoom 6, which is zoom standard, um, we'll get a look at it. You can see that these graphs just, that one goes up and over, and then this one goes up really high and over, and they don't ever even touch. Um, one of them starts at 1, the other one starts at 0. That's why there's no solution here, because they don't ever touch each other. Okay, the next one I want to do is one that's really probably uh, only really feasible to do on a, a calculator. Um, maybe that's not quite fair, but it, it's one that would be uh, much easier to do uh, with a calculator. Um, square root of 2x plus 3 equals 3 minus... Square root of 2x. Uh, okay, the reason I said I want to use a calculator here, at first off, is there's two square roots. We've seen that before, but there's also something else. So if there's something else along with the square root, uh, if you try and start squaring things, you're going to have a foil situation on your hands, and that means you're going to breed more square roots, not fewer. And so, you know, if you have two square roots and you don't have a way to get one square root on one side, the other square root by itself on the other side, think about using a graphing calculator. Um, I'm going to push y equals. I'm going to graph, clear out everything once again. Uh, type in the square root of 2x plus 3. And then 3 minus square root of 2x. So I'm graphing the left side and the right side. I'm going to hit graph, see what this looks like. Okay, so I'm looking at this. I see a potential intersection point right around here. Uh, the graph is not really 
zoomed in that well, so I want to zoom this in some more and focus right in this little area in the first quadrant. You go to window to adjust the window. And so for X, maybe I'll, instead of going all the way to the far left, maybe I'll just do like negative one to like three. Let's just see what that looks like. That kind of focuses on the middle part of the graph. And I'm seeing a, a, a crossing point a little bit better, but I still would like to scrunch the Y down in because I don't need all this space. Um, so maybe we'll go to the window and let the Y be like, I like to see the maybe a negative one to four. Let's see how that looks. There's my first graph. That looks far better. I can definitely see there's one crossing point. And so now I need to make the calculator find that. Uh, I'm going to go to Calc, second Calc and ask it to choose option five, which is the intersection op option. And uh, so now it says, what's the first curve? You can see the cursor is just like bopping around there. Hit enter any place. So enter is right there. Hit enter. And then it goes to the other curve. Where do you think this, what, is that the right curve they ask? And you say yes. And then it says guess. And what you do is you move the cursor over really close, like right there, and you hit enter. The reason you have to guess is if there's more than one answer, then it wants you to show which one it is you want. So, but there's only one here. So it looks like X is 0.5, Y is 2. And that is something that I probably would not have easily found uh, otherwise. Um, like I said, on the calculator, you really don't need to check because the calculator is not going to show you an extraneous answer. But if you did want to check, 2 times 1 half is 1. You'd have the square root of 4 equals 3 minus 1 half times 2, so 2 equals 2, and sure enough, that checks out. So that's a way that you can use your calculator um, to, to solve. Um, let's see, let me find my, my problem here. Um, if you have... Something like this. Uh, again, you're going to get the term with the root first uh, by itself. So that means I'm going to add one right here. And then that equals 32. And then to get rid of the, the, the 5 over 2 power, you put a power of 2 over 5 on both sides. That means the 32 and the x plus 9 to the uh, 5 halves. And these cancel out, so you get x plus 9 equals the bottom is the root, the top is the power, so this is going to be the, the fifth root of 32 squared. The fifth root of 32 is 2 because 2 times 2 is 4, 8, 16, 32. And so that is actually 2 squared. x plus 9 equals 4. Take away your 9. X is negative 5. Um, and we do need to check and make sure that's reasonable. This is really X plus 9 uh, under the square root to the fifth. So we would not want anything that made this negative. Clearly, if you put negative 5 in here plus 9, that is positive. So that, that should check out just fine. Uh, so anyway, this is an introduction to solving equations that have roots. Um, some things to remember. Um, the bottom, uh, the, the bottom part of a fractional exponent is the root. The top is the power. Uh, when, when, if possible, get one square root or one cube root equal to another like root. That's a nice situation to have. Um, and you can always use the calculator to um, graph the left side, graph the right side, see where they cross if you don't have any other good options.